Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back to the shop, everybody. Hope you're all having an awesome weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today. And this past week, I asked a question to, to the folks over on Patreon uh, along the lines to see if there were any additional topics or bits of information that they would like to have covered. And there were a few comments along the lines of, you know, are there ways that we can, uh, you know, clean certain things and, and reuse them? And other comments along the lines of, are there solvents or compounds that you, you know that can do more than one thing you know can they pull a double duty and looking over those comments along with everything that i've been seeing uh you know comment wise over on youtube the past few weeks there's been a bit of a reoccurring theme right along the lines of uh you know it's getting expensive are there things that we can do to cut costs on on our projects and that and, and given you know, kind of how things are going now, I don't really know if they're going to be getting any better anytime soon uh, with you know, materials just in general, some you know, getting difficult to source, as well as price increases. Anything that can be done to kind of save a few bucks, I don't think that's ever going to be a bad thing. So that is one of the things we're going to be talking about today. So rather than just sitting here talking to the camera, which I think is boring as hell and about as interesting as watching paint dry, uh, I'm going to try and get a few things done while I'm going over this info. Now, the number one general question that I, like I had mentioned, you know, I have been getting for several weeks now is, you know, are there ways that you can clean and reuse uh, certain, what are consult, well, well, what I consider to be consumables, uh, paint brushes, rollers, mixing cups, uh, that sort of thing. And so I'm going to be doing a little bit of a demo here, Ooh, but I'm not going to make a mess. I got a cup. For a reason. And the answer to that is yes, uh, but only to a point and only with certain things. Uh, there are certain things where it makes sense to try and do that and other things that, well, it just doesn't. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is a little bit of a demo uh, on these paint cups. Now, paint cups absolutely can be reused, like I said, to a point. Uh, there are some little little tips and tricks that you can do uh, with your with your cups and specifically with the material still in your cups to kind of give you the advantage as, as far as being able to cleanly remove everything and, and reuse them. Uh, so I've got two identical cups here, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to do two very different things with them. So one cup, I'm going to stir it, you know, and just basically. What I'm looking at is how I'm coating the sides here. Uh, you notice that I'm, I'm trying to keep the majority of the material at the lower half of this cup. I don't want to smear it all the way up and have a, a thin coat all the way around this cup. Versus on this one, I'm not going to scrape anything. I'm just going to kind of haphazardly roll it around, coat the sides, and uh, just see kind of what, uh, what the overall difference is on how cleanly we can remove this stuff once it's set up. You know, this is kind of going to be simulating if you're using a brush and say you, you load it on, you loaded it on a little bit too heavy, kind of wiping some off, you know, getting the excess off so you're not going to be dripping all over the boat or the dock or what have you. So let's just kind of keep it real world here or real life situation. All right, so let's move those off to the side and move on. Now, as far as other items like brushes and rollers and that kind of thing. Uh, is it worth trying to clean and reuse those? In my opinion, uh, no, not, not at all. Um, for a couple of reasons, you know, the, I'll address each of these separately because brushes are a little bit more unique than, than uh, rollers, just looking at it strictly from a cost perspective. Now, when it comes to cleaning brushes, uh, sometimes you can get away with it to an extent, uh, but what happens is when you're, when you're using these brushes with, say, solvents like polyester resin or epoxies or that kind of thing, uh, what happens is that the, the fibers, you know, the bristles, they absorb the resin, and you're never going to get all that resin out of the bristles. It's just, it's not going to work. Now, granted, ideally, I should be trying this with acetone, but I don't have any. <laughs> But 
brushes just don't clean up. And I mean, they can look clean, but after you go through and uh, the hassle of trying to get all the material worked out of the bristles, you let it sit overnight, they're, because the bristles have absorbed material, it's the, the bristles are going to be stiff. And when, when they're stiff, that means they're no longer going to be able to absorb or hold on to resin next time you go and try to use it. And it's probably going to end up tearing your glass and when you're trying to wet everything out. It's just, it doesn't work. And honestly, from a cost perspective, the cost of these brushes, I, you know, I buy these things by the case, you know, and I forget what it costs for like a box of 50, but I want to say it breaks down to something like 12, 15 cents a brush, something like that. Now, when you're trying to clean these, you're going to go through more in materials between the solvent and a, you know, a cleaning cup than the actual brush itself is worth. So as far as the brushes are concerned, trying to reuse those, absolutely not. They are 100% something that I consider to be a consumable and it's a one and done kind of an item. Now, when it comes to rollers, now this I can absolutely see in certain situations now, or why you'd want to try and reuse these. Because uh, the reality is some roller heads or roller covers, they're just stupid expensive. But, you know, it's one of those deals where you, you, you use the appropriate roller for what it is that you're doing. Like you're not going to want to use a $20 roller for rolling out resin I and mean, doing fiberglass work. Now you would want to use that $20 roller for applying your paint. So for example, it's the same kind of thing as with the, with the brushes. Now, these are the cheapest little roller heads that I can find. I think I got like a hundred of these for, gosh, I don't remember, maybe like 10, 12 bucks for a, a bag of a hundred of them. Now, these things would be an absolute nightmare to use with paint, but because they're a bit fluffy, they work fantastic with resin. So, you know, for these, because they are so fluffy, you're never going to get the resin out of these things. It's just never going to happen. Uh, so, in my opinion, when it comes to rollers, not even worth the effort. Uh, again, they're, they're so cheap and they are readily available. I mean, these things are not a hot commodity, so these things are not in short supply <laughs> at all. So, when it comes to rollers and brushes, yeah, I kind of group those two together. They're just not worth the time or the effort or the, the cost of the materials to even try and salvage these when at the end of the day, it's going to be a complete fail anyways. Now, when I'm talking about these brushes, I'm talking about these cheap disposable throwaway ones that you're going to be using with resins, like if you're doing glasswork, that kind of thing. Certainly not your 30, 40, 60 dollar badger hair brushes that you're going to be using with doing paints or varnishes. Uh, those brushes, you, you want to treat like your firstborn. You want to make sure you take really good care of them. Uh, now, in those type of applications, the, what you're going to be using to clean those is the solvent or the reducer for whatever material it is that you're using. So like for example, uh, varnishes, right? Uh, most one part varnishes are oil based. Not all of them. I mean, there are some hybrids out there, but for the most part, your old school traditional varnishes are oil based. So for cleaning out those brushes, then you're going to be using mineral spirits for cleaning out those badger hair brushes here and things, <laughs> well, you know, after you know, using them for varnish. Now with paints, it's going to vary depending on the paint that you're using, if it's a one part, two part, but whatever it may happen to be, whatever reducer the manufacturer recommends for thinning out their product, that's what you're going to use for cleaning up the brush. I still hold fast that uh, it's just not worth trying to clean rollers just because it's just not worth it. But a really good high-end brush uh, when you're using them with paints or with varnishes, 100% absolutely. Just not these cheap little tab brushes or throwaway brushes. Now, as far as other things that can be done to try and shave some costs off on a project uh, that may not necessarily seem real obvious, is when you're ordering your materials, order the materials that you're going to be able to use within a given timeline. And, you know, because everything has a shelf life. Now, this is something that I see happen quite a bit, you know, because I, I work with a lot of folks over on Patreon on their projects. And what, what I, had, I have seen happen over and over is that people are, they'll go into a project and think that they need to order all of the materials that they're going to need from start to finish, even though that project itself may extend a year, maybe, or maybe even sometimes two years. So what, what happens is that they'll order all this material and then before they actually get around to using it, it's already old and expired. 
And another thing that can be done to help minimize the expense is source your materials from as few different places as you can. Uh, look for those one-stop shop kind of places where you can really get everything all in one, all in one go. What that's going to allow you to do is save on your shipping costs. So, for example, uh, let's, well, I don't know, well, Jamestown doesn't really even apply to this because they have free shipping, but, <laughs> but let's just say you order, uh, say, a dozen different things from a, you know, half a dozen different retailers. So what's, what's going to happen is you're going to get hammered with shipping costs from each of those six places, whereas if you were to just, say, source all of your material from one, one place, uh, depending on the policy, sometimes there's uh, no shipping, ex you know, shipping is free, but in other cases, even if there is going to be some shipping involved, a lot of times you'll see that with, specifically with hazardous materials, but you're going to pay less to have everything shipped from one location than you would be if you went off of three, four, five, or, or more different locations. By the time you add all that up, you're paying for shipping, handling, and, and packaging from each of those different retailers. So the shipping costs, uh, especially when you're looking over the course of a, a fairly larger project, those things, those costs can become significant. So the more that you can minimize that, the better that's going to help your bottom line. And another thing that can be done to help keep your costs down is to minimize your waste. And by that, I mean store your materials properly. Uh, for example, you know, resins, caulking, uh, you know, really any of the stuff that we use uh, on you know, working on boats, it does not like extreme temperature swings. So when you're, when you're not using it, don't store it in a garage where it's going to get 125 degrees. And on the you know, other side of that coin, you, you don't want to store this material in an area where it's going to freeze. Uh, that's, just, that's just waste. Uh, resins like this, or chemicals, the things that we use on boats, they like, they like consistency, right? They like you know, 60 to 70-ish degrees, you know, even upwards of 80. As long as it's consistent, you just, what you want to avoid are these big temperature swings. Uh, that is a surefire way to cut the shelf life of a lot of these products by more than half. And well, once they're shot, they're done. That's just money. You might as well throw it in the bonfire pit. And the last bit of advice I have for helping to kind of keep costs down is go online. I mean, specifically go to YouTube and look for channels or content creators that are working with the materials that you happen to be looking for, you know, regardless of whatever it may happen to be. Uh, a lot of times with these channels, uh, you know, myself included, once, once you start to get, you know, a, a, a few people watching you, they are offered discount codes from the manufacturers on certain things. Sometimes it's 5, 10, sometimes even 15%. And sometimes in, in addition to that, they'll give you free shipping. So find the channels that are working, like I said, working with the material that you're looking for, you know, even if it's not even a, a, a boat related, you know, maybe it's a little doodad for doing exercise or whatever it may happen to be. But find a channel that's working with whatever it is that you're looking for to see if they have any discount codes that are available. Now, for example, I'm just going to use myself as an example. Uh, I have discount codes from Total Boat as well as I'm setting up my own discount codes for Alexio. Now, with Total Boat, uh, you get, I have 10% off the, you know, that I can offer out as well as free shipping. Now, I, I tend to reserve those strictly for the folks over on Patreon as well as I'm going to do the same thing with Alexio. Now, with Alexio, uh, I'm going to be offering 10% off on the overall uh, purchase. But you know, that's just one example. Uh, I know that for, well, another one, I, I, I tend to watch a lot of cooking channels, right? And uh, you know, this fall, I want to get into making sausages and you know, brats and hot dogs, that kind of thing. You never know when that might come in handy. <laughs> but you know, just as an example, uh, you know, I, I look over a few channels that I tend to watch pretty regularly, and I save over 200 bucks on some equipment that I ordered. So it, it pays to do a little bit of homework online, especially you know, when, you're, when you're looking to minimize costs overall. Now, none of these things by themselves, you know, that, we, that I covered here today, none of them by themselves are going to add up to a significant amount of money. But when you take a little bit here, a little bit there, and over time, over the course of a project, all that stuff adds up. Before you know it, you save several hundred dollars. Now, these were just some of the ideas that I came up with to help minimize project costs. Now, right now, I need to go take a little bit of a break, let this material that we mixed up here earlier, let make sure that is all set up. And through the magic of video, our gel coat is set up. Now, it's not cured, uh, but it is set up. It's been two, maybe about, yeah, about two hours or so. 
Now, what I suspect we're going to find uh, is that along the bottom, where the gel coat is actually th thickest, uh, that part is going to actually feel hard. Uh, when we get up along the sides where it's thin, I think that's still going to be a little floppy, again, just because it hasn't quite had enough time for it to completely do its thing. But let's see how well these things clean up. Yeah, pretty much what I figured. So the sides are a little floppy, but the bottom is rock hard. Well, hell, this can actually be peeled off. <laughs> so you can see up along this upper edge here, there's still some material that's stuck there. And you know, that's why you, you can reuse cups to an extent. So, what I'll, so what's gonna happen eventually is that after you reuse this cup a number of times, some of these little bits that are stuck on the side, they're gonna start flaking off and then they're gonna flake off into whatever material you have mixed up on here. So when you're applying it, rolling it, brushing it, whatever you may happen to be doing, you're gonna get chunks in here. Now, right, you know, this little bit right here, I wouldn't be worried about this at all, uh, but I am a little surprised that it didn't come out cleaner. Again, that's just probably just where it was thin. Now, what I'm gonna be really curious to see is because up, along the sides of this, this container, this is the one where I basically coated all, all the way around. Because the sides are thicker, I'm gonna be curious to see if this actually cleans up better. So, let's find out. Oh, hell. <laughs> that was easy. And the inside of this cup is still whistle clean. So what are the takeaways here? Well, if you have excess material left over in your cup, right? Try and coat the sides of it the best you can. Uh, it seems like the thicker of the, the, the thicker the material is along the sides of the of the cup, the cleaner it's going to pop out. It's when you, like say, if you were to come in and try and wipe it out with some paper towel or something and you end up getting some really thin uh, material just kind of pressed up along the side of the cup, that's going to be the part that's going to stick like we saw in this in, the, in that first cup. But where it was thicker, pop, it popped out nice and clean. So. So that second cup that came out perfect, uh, you can reuse this cup over and over and over. Typically after a while when you, you know, especially if you were to let this sit overnight, you know, to where the gel coat would fully cure. In order to get that material out, you're usually squeezing the, you know, the, the containers, trying to break it loose from the side of the cup. Eventually, you know, doing that, you're going to crack the plastic. Now, how many times you're going to, how many reuses you're going to get out of that cup? Who knows, you know, I mean, it's uh, until it cracks, <laughs> right? But that second one that we did that came out perfect, uh, there's nothing in here. I mean, it's, it's whistle clean. So I would have no problem reusing that cup again for like if you were mixing up, say, for a finished coat um, of the same material, obviously. So I don't know, I'm actually, I was a little surprised. I kind of thought for sure that the first cup was going to come out cleaner than the second, but not the case. So it's at this point, this video is taking a very hard left turn. Uh, came up from editing and turns out uh, pretty much half of everything that I recorded, the microphone or the, the battery on my mic died. So I had nothing, I, have no, I had no audio. I had no way of salvaging this. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna have to cut the video and uh, the video here. Now I kind of suspect it's already gotten a little bit long in the tooth. So hopefully, hopefully this all works out. Now, takeaways off of what I was actually able to cover in, in, uh, in video, uh, there are some things that you can do to save costs on your project. And some of them are 100% worth it, like cleaning your, or cleaning your buckets, your stir sticks. Uh, look around online for creators that are using the products that you're looking for. See if you can find, find those discount codes. Uh, take, you know, store your material properly so you're not wasting it and don't order so much that you're not going to be able to use it before it gets wasted. Uh, just little things like that, uh, again, I think I'd mentioned this, none of those one things on their own is going to add up to a significant amount of money, but when you kind of combine it all together, it can, it can come up to a pretty sizable amount. 
So on that note, uh, this is going to be the breaking spot. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some of these tips helpful. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave those down below. I will do my best to follow up with you. And as always, I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week with fresh batteries. <laughs> This has been a Boatworks Today, the Jackson.